Oh hey y'all, welcome to Fatty's Helpful Hints, the show dedicated to helping you learn games good. Today, we are going to talk about the top 5 player unknowns, tips and tricks to help you get that sweet, sweet, delicious chicken dinner. And let's just dive on right into it. Coming in at number 5. Now, I am going to start with a very basic tip, but this is the number one thing I see players doing wrong all the time, and it's going to be your sensitivity. Now, everyone's going to say, oh, you need to do this sensitivity or you need to do this sensitivity, and I'm not here to just tell you a number, go for it, and you're going to hit every shot every time, because that is just a bunch of baloney. What you need to do is pay attention to how you're shooting. So I got two clips here. One is going to be what I call like the, the sway spray, where when you're aiming for somebody, you overshoot one way, so you go back the other when you're overshooting and then you're overshooting again just going back and forth hoping somewhere in between you're gonna hit it and at that point you know your sensitivity is just too high so you need to back it down just a little bit and then play a couple more games and see how that is now if you just can't keep up with your target that means you need to bump it up just a little bit personally on my uh, just general sensitivity I play as a three and then when I go down to the different scopes I go a little bit lower and lower and lower depending on how far the zoom is because you're not needing to move it as much to kind of trace and lead and I found out even with an eight time scope you know when you're leading somebody you only lead the bullets by a very short amount so you know going to a, a two to even a one sensitivity on that eight time scope will actually do you a ton a ton of good and that is why I'm putting it as my number five on this list. Coming in at number two, and this tip is going to be all about your initial drop, and we're going to talk about drop location versus distance. Now when you look on the map, it is split into a grid system. Now I found out if you are trying to just dive the furthest away from the plane, so just from diving out and just going in a singular direction, you can make it about one block and a half a block before you'll hit the ground. So just knowing that, you know, when you're looking at where your plane is, Think about that, you know, you don't want to, I never recommend just dropping straight down out of the plane unless you're playing that rushing game where you're just going to drop to a really busy place like right off the bat and just try to be the first person down to get something and just hold your position until people kind of work their way away from you. Or I always like to dive as far as away as I can from the plane. Usually people don't tend to go super far away from the plane, they tend to stay a little bit closer. And when it comes to the location, this is a heavily debated topic from what I've kind of done my research. I personally like to drop into something that's a little bit more heavy, uh, heavily crowded, a little bit more resources and stuff to loot. And that is because if you go away and you know you land in a field or you land on one of those like smaller locations, you oftentimes have a chance of no one's gonna land near you. And that's great, that's hunky-dory. You can get a couple little things and kind of move on. But what I tend to find is if you do do that and someone else is near you, then you're getting in a big fight right away. And that usually like wipes part of your team or you wipe their team and it puts you in kind of a rough position off the bat. Where if you land in the bigger one, yeah, you're gonna see where you know, a lot more people there, but you can kind of choose where to go from there you know you can see that a lot of people you know if you're talking about one of the major towns are landing in there you can kind of sneak away you know stay to the outside grab something real quick and then just book it out of there you know and oftentimes that's where you find more cars and stuff so it is a little bit more riskier dropping into those heavily crowded areas but oftentimes too i find that's where like the more noobish players are landing you know they want to find the cars and the stuff really quick where you know the more expert players are the ones that are going to be a little bit further away and you might have a harder time getting in that initial fight right off the bat so i'd recommend a big city but try to be a little bigger city further away as possible coming in at number three now this tip is one that i have been really bad in the past about doing and i've been really getting a lot better about using my whole entire kit now you really want to set yourself up good in PUBG. You know, it's all random what you're going to get, but you can still kind of fine tune stuff. But oftentimes, you know, you, you'll get a long distance gun and you'll get something that's automatic and a little bit closer range, which is really good. But oftentimes, you know, you're left with stun grenades, frag grenades, smoke grenades, and stuff like that that you're not really utilizing all that much. And that is a huge shame. Grenades are incredibly powerful in PUBG, especially when you're entering a house. You know, you can have a, a lot of the houses, you know, are a major room right off the bat. And, you know, you can blow a hole in the door, look in the window and just huck it in there. And you can oftentimes down somebody really easily. And also, you know, you're talking about endgame. Smoke grenades are my favorite thing at endgame because they're just a huge distraction. 
Uh, me and my buddy were just playing earlier today, and what we did is we were last circle, you know, and there was only two guys left, and nobody was really moving. It was kind of that stalemate. So what we ended up doing is smoking some just uh, blah, 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 <clears throat> smoking some smoke grenades out, just to kind of create that little bit of chaos. And then we started hucking nades in different areas of that. And sure enough, a guy got spooked enough, he got up and started moving around and we were able to pick him off like that. You know, so it is really good to utilize the entire kit that you have. You know, if you have multiple different scopes, you know, make sure everybody in your team has stuff that they need. But you know, if you have an ability, you know, you have like a, like an M16, and you have like an eight or like a six time, a six time scope, or let's say, and a holographic. Keep them both. You know, utilize that situation. If you're in a big open field, you know that's going to be really helpful having that. You know, wide, larger scope. But if you're going to be moving inside cities, you know, you're going to want to change it to that holographic sight or a red dot sight. To, you know, give you a little bit more advantage in those cl close quarter ta tactics. Uh, also, and not a lot of people know this, another little hidden tip in here, is if you have a frying pan and you actually are carrying it on your back and somebody shoots it with a, a bullet or anything like that, it will bounce off. Also, if you're convinced somebody early game has like a grenade and all you have is the frying pan and they throw it at you, you can actually smack it back at them, which makes it incredibly useful. So, you know, make sure you're using every little last bit of that kit that you can to keep you alive and help you get that chicken dinner. Coming in at number two. This tip is all about utilizing your angles, movement, and cars properly to your best of your ability. Now, the cars are going to also come into my very last tip, which is talking about the circles themselves. But we'll touch about it a little bit here. So with PUBG, if you're playing in the third person perspective, uh, you really got to watch your angles. Now, you can change which side the camera's perspective is going to be on, but default, it's on your left, so everything is kind of pushed to the right side with your reticles and stuff. That means when you're getting in fights with people, you need to utilize that cover appropriately. When you're peeking, you want to kind of peek to the right side because you're going to get the best angles for that, as well as, let's say you're rotating around a tree, you're going to want to be pushing to the left to keep the enemy on your right side, or they're actually going to get a better advantage angle on you when they're shooting at you as well. Now, with movement, you want to make sure you're constantly moving in PUBG. If you're being shot at an open field, I really highly don't recommend just laying down right away. Um, you know, sometimes that can be a tactic, you can get hit in the grass if they're in a level playing field as you, but oftentimes you'll lay down if they have a slightly higher ground, they're just going to pick you off in an instant. I would say keep moving around, try to see where those flashes are, and then once you do kind of spot, you know, use audio cues and you spot that enemy, you, that's when you want to really just keep it hidden, high down, and then you know, you actually know you're safe and not just hoping you're not going to get headshot in the next couple seconds. Um, with cars, cars are really only good for using movement early game. You know, you don't want to take it too later in the game or it becomes a lot worse for you. Um, you know, we we're going to talk about circle times in this last tip, but I would never recommend using it and past like the cu first couple circles. You know, once it starts closing in a little bit smaller, you need to ditch that car and start moving on foot and just be very tactical with it. When you're moving also, circles are going to be constant closing in. And I always like to shoot for the gap is what I call it. So you're going to have that big blue circle that's moving in on a smaller white circle. Now that circle is rarely, rarely right in the middle of the, the first circle. So what you really want to do is wherever the smallest point is between the blue circle and the white circle is where you're going to want to move in. And that's what I consider to be the gap. That area, you know, you don't really have to watch your behind you too much because the walls be pushing in. You know, you do have to watch people getting trapped behind you. But then, you know, you're not having to travel as much of a distance too, which makes your job a lot easier. And then as you're moving in, you know, you, you're just closing the area that you have to watch and you're able to just move with the circles. This strategy works with me every time, you know, if you can move the gap and there's like a cliff too with the water, that's going to put you in a great position every time. Uh, you know, you want to win that sweet chicken dinner, so you got to put yourself in the best position right at the end. Coming in at my number one top tip to get you that sweet, sweet chicken dinner, and it is going to be knowing your circles. Now, in PUBG, you're going to have eight circles that are going to last the match all the way up to the very final circle, and those are going to be at all various times. I will put the screens, the times on the screen here, but what I want to really talk about is that first one is your main loot one. It doesn't matter where you go, that first circle you should just be looting. Go wherever you need to go and start paying attention to where that next circle is going to be. So from when the circle starts to move, or it's going to give you five minutes before the circle starts to move in, and this one also the circle moves in the most slow, so you're going to have a little bit extra time there as well. So when you get down to a little bit later in the game, I'm talking about circle four, 
you need to be done with your car. You need to put yourself in a good enough position. Maybe after circle three starts to move in, you know, and you still have a vehicle, maybe drive to where that circle four is going to be. Put yourself in the dead middle, somewhere around there, find a good place to ditch your car. And that's when you start to need to move tactically. If you have a car too late in the game, it just draws way too much attention. They blow up too easy. Everyone's kind of looking out for that, listening for that, and it just doesn't help you. The, the distance that you're traveling is so small that if you're really focusing on just using, utilizing that car, you're just going to put yourself in a really poor position. You know, and you need to be paying attention to what landmarks are going to be around this. You know, never go to a house either. You know, when you're, you're moving into those circles, a house can be okay to hold up, but really it, it's just finding something in the nature, some kind of bush, getting a high ground, you know, making sure you find an area where you don't have to watch behind you. That's really going to be that key. You know, you need to realize these circles times because you can plan a lot better than you're like, okay, you know, I only have like this amount of time before I need to start moving. And then you kind of realize distances and that is going to put you in the very best position to win that chicken dinner. Thanks so much for watching as always. If you guys would like today's video, don't forget to show that subscribe and the like button, a little bit of love. I do post weekly videos, mostly tips and tricks, how to kind of videos. I always respond to questions too. So if you guys, you know, wanna uh, give me some more tips, or you know, if you guys are looking at some of my other videos and you guys are really getting stuck, I do like to comment back. Um, you always leave comments on YouTube. I also have an Instagram, always can reach me there, as well as Facebook. So if you guys need some more fatty, self hints, please go there to check that out. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.